Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about the differences between the versions of the Chicago Manual of Style style sheet provided with Perfectit 5 and the updated version that's provided with Perfectit 6. The version provided with Perfectit 5 was based on the 17th edition of the Chicago Manual and it has now been updated to reflect changes that were introduced in the 18th edition. So let's have a look at these changes. So this document shows the comparison between the two versions. This version down here is from Perfected 5. It's based on, you'll see if I go to the top, you'll see it's based on the 17th edition and uh, this version on this side is the new version based on uh, the the uh, 18th edition of the Chicago Manual of Style and I created this by exporting the two style sheets and then using Notepad++ with an add-on called Converter, uh, um, sorry, called Compare, to compare the two documents. How did I export them? I used my export tool, which I will be providing to participants in the Perfected Masterclass, which I'll be providing on the Magistrad platform in March 2025. Uh, there's information about this in the video description below so check out the video description to sign up for the perfected masterclass so the first thing we can see on here is that we've got these new hyphenation of phrases checks for uh, the words with grader so ordinal numbers with grader so if you refer to a student who is for example a tenth grader perfect it will make sure that you write it without a hyphen. We also see these um, phrases with about 5-4, about 5-7 and uh, this is uh, for references to a person's height um, in feet and inches so we would write these without a hyphen. Now you may think the order in which these items appear is a little bit strange. Why do we start with 10th? We do 10th, 11th, 12th, then we go to 1st, up to 9, and then with the, with the height, it's seemingly in a random order, but these are actually in alphabetical order. So, um, so that's what's going on here. You'll notice it starts at 5 one that's the the smallest height included here so if there are any references to anything below five uh, somebody who's four foot twelve or anything above uh, six foot seven then uh, perfect it is not going to flag it and notice that the rules have been added with the word about so they're not trying to catch every instance of references to height um, what if somebody says approximately is approximately in here it's not so if our text says approximately 5 2 it's not going to get flagged so then you've got the question of whether you would it's been added this way with the word about you could just add it as um, 6 5 or, or whichever height you're referring to with, without the word about but then you're more likely to get the false positive so that's why they've added the rules with the word about and this is something you need to think about when you're creating your own style sheets do you want to add context words the problem with adding context words is you might miss certain instances the problem with leaving out the context word is that you can end up with too many false positives now the style sheets created by Perfected, they want to try to reduce the false positives. If I'm creating my own, I'm not too fussed about the false positives because if I start seeing too many, then I will start to take action to try to reduce those false positives. Um, let's move on to row 277. 
and you just scroll up a little bit so here we see uh, manu a manu has been added and again context has been added here the the verb fight now a good thing to remember whenever you're adding rules with verbs is that often you're going to have the present tense um, or, or sorry the infinitive form so here fight you're going to have the third person present tense which is usually with an s added on the end so here we've got fight you're going to have the gerund form with the ing on the end and you're also going to have the past tense in this case we see it down here okay remember these entries are in alphabetical order so we've got fort mano a mano here and then with some verbs you're going to have two past tense forms like ate and eaten for example you're also going to have the verbs that have two forms like creep and cret so just bear those things in mind when you're adding rules that contain verbs the next thing I'm going to look at in on line 310 it appears that an item has been removed we've got here fully automated and the um, this doesn't appear on the right hand side so it looks like it's been removed but actually it's been moved to a whole new category which is ly adverbs so adverbs ending with ly we've got them here okay and you can see this imperfected if you go to always find and and open the drop down you'll see there's a category for adverb compounds with ly and basically they've they've added or they, they've tried to add every possible form here so all the adverbs with ly they've um, tried to predict the verbs that will go with them so we've got for example academically oriented actively managed affordably priced so th they've tried to include all the possible combinations that you will have here now that's a great way of avoiding false positives the problem with this approach is that it's impossible to include everything right so uh, thinking about the sports text that I do we could say a badly taken penalty now if you were to write this with a hyphen or if your author w was to write this with a hyphen it wouldn't get flagged because badly taken is not here so what I think is a better solution and you can add this to the you can make a copy of the um, Chicago manual style sheet and add this ruling wildcards you can look for something let me open up a notepad to show you this you could add a wildcard rule that looks for ly at the end of the at the end of a word and uh, so so this angle bracket indicates the end of the word followed by a hyphen and then you could say followed by another word so to do this you could say a to z at up until the end of the word okay and you could also um, what I would recommend I like to see the whole word highlighted so I would try to capture the start of the word so I would say anything it can start with a capital letter or small case and then A to Z any number of times and this is going to be at the start of the word and then we can put round brackets around these items so that in the replace box we say we want to replace it with the first set of brackets followed by a space not a hyphen followed by the um, the second set of round brackets now this approach will result in false positives for example it will flag let's say if we had a barely conscious person <coughs> here the word barely is not an adverb it's an adjective and so the hyphenation is correct 
but if you're a professional editor you will know this when you see it flagged and such cases are going to be quite rare so I would rather put this rule in and I have the knowledge to ignore the false positives then have the rules this way where something might get missed um, but that, that's just my opinion and, and I totally understand why Perfected went with the approach that they went with here we see another long list of hyphenation of phrases rules that have been added remember we had earlier about 5.8 about 5.11 this time we've got um, he is 5.8 and here below we've got I am 5.8 and later we've got she is and you've noticed also there's the there's the forms with the apostrophe so um, there are all sorts of contexts added here to make sure that we're getting as many instances as possible but it's not going to find everything <coughs> for example what if we had we are all about okay if we have the word about it's going to work but if we have we are all um, six two or taller for instance it's not going to flag that okay so again you may prefer just to add and with my export and import tool you would be able to do this you could export this whole list then remove the he is part and then re-import it so that you flag every instance of 58 written with a hyphen but then you're likely to have some false positives so you need to look at each instance and check the context and check whether you're going to remove the hyphen or not now in this case on line uh, 466 and 467 we've got some rules actually the the, the rules were already there um, it's just the the explanation has been changed actually no it's been switched around okay so in the old version it was flagging is half asleep and um, it was saying the term half asleep is usually hyphenated as an adjective okay but wh I think what they've realized is that the what he meant by as an adjective is if you said like a half asleep person okay so you have a noun after it and I think they've realized that it's more common actually to say a person is half asleep so then they're f now it's flagging the version written with a hyphen and it's telling you to write it without a hyphen um, if it's following the noun okay so John is half asleep okay again we got the problem of um, false positives or do we want false positives or, or are we happy missing things so in this case the way it's been designed it's going to miss things it's not going to find half awake because it's not in the list um, so if if you wanted to what, what uh, one approach that we could do here is just to add the word half in um, in phrases to avoid or consider and then it will flag all the instances of half irrespective of whether it's written open or with a hyphen okay the way we've got it designed at the moment particularly if we look at the next line 467 half finished uh, if we were to have a half finished something let's just check if that's in there uh, let's search for let's search for all the instances of half finished find all in current document yeah so we've it's not going to flag a half finished um, artwork because that's not in there we don't have a half finished so what we could do here is we could flag all the instances of half and we get you to check them all you might find that annoying you might not want to check the word half every time it appears so just these are things to think about when you're creating your own style sheets you s you'll see in your style guide it says what to do with the word half do you want to flag all those instances all the time 
and you can check through them and some instances you'll add the hyphen some instances you'll remove a hyphen sometimes you'll leave it as it's written now if we scroll back up again I'll see we already had our half asleep and our half finished and if we scroll down so down here we see we've got were half asleep were half finished and I believe we've also got was was half asleep was half finished but we see we've not got would be half finished we've not got actually we could just add be half finished but if I scroll up you'll see that we don't have that okay it would appear around here and it's not there now if we added B it would cover to be it would cover would be it would cover will be so we would get um, two different tenses plus the infinitive form um, so it would probably be a good idea to add that so you see the advantage of maybe just adding the word half even though you're going to get lots of false positives you're going to get a more exhaustive list and you'll be able to check them through I'm going to go down now to row 547 and you'll see here we've got a list of we've got mid to late followed by uh, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, etc. Um, so, um, just to comment on this, if you were creating your own style sheet, I think I would just add the phrase mid to late because I can't see any uh, context where um, where you wouldn't do this. Maybe um, mid to late term pregnancy maybe but then you probably would also add the suspended hyphen so if we were if we were just to flag the phrase mid to late then it would include all um, instances and I think the suspended hyphen would be used in all those instances for example the Chicago manual of style gives the example of mid to late 1985 so we could now this you would need a wildcard rule to include all the possible years which you could add but I just think it's better it would be better here just to add mid to late I can't see any s any um, any instances where this suspended hyphen shouldn't be used one last thing on hyphens let's we see all the ordinal numbers have been added here and it says that compound ordinals from 21st to 99th are usually hyphenated it would be quite nice to see this maybe added as a rule in the settings uh, in future editions um, of perfected now uh, this is the kind of list that you might want to use my export and import tool for you could export this list of uh, hyphenation of compound ordinals you can export it then you can add it to my import template you can just add it as a normal hyphenation of phrases rule and you can import it into whatever style sheet you are using even if you're not working with the Chicago manual moving on from hyphenation to the preferred spelling section we can see there's a whole list of items that appear to have been remo removed these are words with ligatures and um, these have been actually they've been moved to a whole new section called ligatures let's see if I can quickly find it uh, okay I'm gonna search for the word ligatures okay here we are there's a whole section here of ligatures so these were previously in preferred spelling and now they've been moved to a separate check remember the Chicago manual of style has some subcategories uh, that are not found in the other style sheets and one of these now is ligatures if you were creating your own style sheet what I would recommend would be rather than to try to include all the possible words with ligatures I would just add a wildcard rule and in the find box you would just put the ligature by itself and then in the replace box you could suggest replacing it with AE or the OE 
ligature you could suggest replacing with OE but that might depend on the context and it's going to depend if you're using UK or U US English because you've got words like fetus that can be written with OE or can be written with just an E so I would suggest you add it in the wildcards rule we can't add it anywhere else because it's not a full word it's just a letter you add them all the lowercase and the capital forms and you just flag it and then in the in the instructions you just put um, avoid using ligatures and then you would just replace it manually unless you work in a particular context where a particular word comes up a lot then you can add that word if you work in medicine you might add specifically words like fetus anesthetic uh, you could add entries for those but otherwise just get it to flag the the ligature itself whenever it appears moving on to another item on preferred spelling we've got here chairman and it's suggesting that, that we must that we should use the gender neutral chair this might depend on your client some clients will prefer chairperson um, so you might want to edit this rule change it to chairperson if that's what your organization uses um, but I, I think they should have really added chairwoman and chairwomen as well because if your organization prefers to refer to the gender neutral form then they're also going to avoid the word chairwoman and the word chairwomen so maybe you need to add a rule for that chairwoman and chairwomen to use chair or chairs instead or to use chairperson chairpersons if that's what your organization uses on line uh, 3359 we see a little mistake here the number eight in the word period and this was this mistake was already present in the previous version so there are a few little mistakes like this that haven't been corrected one of the advantages of my export tool is that you'll be able to you you can you could copy paste the instructions column into uh, Microsoft Word and then you could run the spell checker on it and it would pick up things like this moving down a few lines we've got here um, K byte and it suggests replacing it with capital K capital B but then the instruction includes a note saying that um, whether to use whether to cap the K depends on the context depends how it's being used this is the kind of thing I like to have a phrases to avoid stroke consider check for where you you want to flag both incorrect forms and just check them through one by one and check how it should be written in each instance um, here we can do it with phrases to avoid consider because it's a non-case sensitive search so it will flag uh, both versions with the capital K and without the capital K and you can check them all in some cases you need to use a wildcard rule if you want to flag two different versions of a word you use a wildcard make sure both versions are picked up by your wildcard string and then again you can check through them and check that each instance is used correctly moving down in the academic degree sub check uh, sub check we've got a couple of new degrees added here so things like this have been added uh, then we'll move on to five seven double one let me move that to the middle of the screen uh, we've got here free reign now it's flagging the versions written with a G and saying that we should write it uh, with without a G now obviously you wouldn't want to check you wouldn't want to add a preferred spelling rule where it flags the word rain with a G every time and suggests that you remove the G every time because there are um, places where we want to spell it with a G so what they've done is they've added these phrases okay previously we already had gives give gives and giving we can see this on the left hand side 
but they obviously realize that they'd missed off given and so they've added this um, but what about if we have give somebody free reign give me free reign gave me free reign we've got gave free reign but we what about gave me free reign so wh what I would suggest actually is the phrase free reign is always going to be spelt without a G okay so instead of uh, trying to add the verb before it I think I would have just added free reign I can't think of any instances when free reign um, maybe in the talking about monarchs the free reign I don't know but there may be contexts where it is spelt with a G even when it comes after the word free but I think these would be so few and far between that I would recommend removing the word gave from this entry and just having it as free reign with a G replace with free reign without a G and then you can delete these other entries give given gives giving moving on to the next one which is 5996 we see here that they've removed sorry 5997 we see here they've removed these accept after entries and accept after has been removed uh, around five times in the whole style sheet and I'm not sure why they've removed it here because if if the word accept is spelt with an, an O appears after the word proton or after the word nuclear then presumably that's the correct spelling so I think they should have left these except after rules in they've also added they've removed except before 140 times most of those though are in the context of the word grader um, for which separate entries have now been added but there are some instances where it's not really clear to me why the except before has been re removed and except before is not used I think anywhere now in the style sheet um, I can just verify that if I say except before and find all in current document yeah it doesn't appear anywhere whereas previously if I go to the left hand side we saw it appeared okay 138 times so all of these have been removed now I'll talk about the accept before rules a little bit more in uh, in my master class so uh, do come along uh, do sign up and it's a very useful way of reducing false positives using accept before accept after and accept for moving on to 6546 we'll see here that emoji you know, previously we were told to replace emojis with an S with emoji without an S this rule has now been removed because the Chicago manual says that although um, five emoji for example although that is technically correct most people would add an S on the end so that's now been removed excellent I agree with that change if your client though specifies that emoji should be written without an S then you could add your own rule there moving on <coughs> uh, 6558 uh, here we see an accept after that's been removed so um, Endeavor should be spelt in US English without the O, uh, without the U, sorry. But if it's referring to the space shuttle, the space shuttle Endeavor, then we should have a U. Um, references now to space shuttle Endeavor with a U are now going to get flagged because the accept after rule has been removed so if you edit for NASA you might want to put this except after rule back in there 
and you might even want to add a separate rule for Space Shuttle Endeavour. On row 7369 we see uh, possum we're told to replace it with opossum and it tells you the difference between the two meanings here I think I would have added a wildcard rule um, and I would check the two together so you could add a wildcard rule that's going to find both forms and we'll have them in a sing it will it will find both forms in a single check and then you can check through and check the whether they're used correctly in each case um, I'll explain how to do these wild cards during my uh, during my master class um, but basically you you're, you're going to search for the word possum uh, without the start of word marker and then it will find both forms moving on to 7411 um, Quran with a Q changed to Quran with a K this has now been removed I believe the Chicago manual style gives you quite a bit of flexibility here in which form you use but you would want to do it consistently so I would maybe add a wildcard rule that finds all the forms with a K with a Q um, with or without the apostrophe with or without the IC you could have the noun and the adjective detected in a single check with wildcards and then um, then it will find them all and then you can check that you've used it consistently um, just below we've got here Savannah and here again except before has been removed but if we had river savannah we wouldn't want this to be flagged so um, I'm not I, I'm not sure why this except before was removed now if we move down again oops we see some entries here uh, we're going to look specifically at uh, here 7850 um, what they've done here they've actually um, they've actually um, removed a duplicate there was a duplicate entry here a resume and they've removed it moving down we see arrière pensée there's now three rules instead of one and that's because the accents you have to include a find and a replace I would like them to make this like capitalization of phrases where you only enter the correct version of the rule and then it finds all the variations of that but it doesn't work like that we have to uh, basically it works like preferred spelling um, so here we've got à l'américaine uh, with neither accent used here we've got à l'américaine with the accent on the E but without the accent on the A and here we've got à l'américaine with the accent on the A but without the accent on the E now this gets even more complicated if we move down to crème brûlée because there are three accents involved here then we have one two three four five six seven different rules um, the way I would recommend not having to add all these rules and um, notice we don't have the plural forms here um, now somebody might add creme brulees like this but they forget the S on here and each time you add a variant um, you know all these we would have to add this if we add this S we would have to add all these different forms with an S and the same if we have the S here again we would have to add all these different forms for the two S's and the same with an S after creme but not after brulee so it starts getting exponentially large 
and the way around this is with is to create a rule with wildcard so each time there's an accent you allow the rule with an accent without an accent also with wrong, ac wrong accents what if somebody writes creme with an acute accent instead of a grave accent or with a circumflex accent on the e we can cover all of these different misspellings with a wildcard if we look at creme fraiche we don't have any entries for creme um, sorry we do again we have the three uh, the three different versions with the e with the accent on the e with the accent on the i and with neither tete-a-tete -tete is another good example because we could have it here without the somebody might write it without the hyphens that's not covered by the current rules somebody might also put an s on the end here again that's not covered by the current rules we could use a smart wildcard rule to cover all possible ways that this could be miswritten missing accents missing hyphens s is in the wrong places etc from line 8402 we see a whole series of new checks that have been added these are titles of newspapers and magazines I think it's a great idea to add it as a new check but currently it's a sub check of um, checks to avoid uh, sorry phrases to avoid stroke consider and I would like to see this actually become a little bit smarter because if they're titles of newspapers and magazines then they should also be italicized and um, let's see whether there th let's see whether there's a an italics entry for all these so let's search for Albuquerque Journal for instance let's see if it's been added find all in current document no there's no italics entry so really these should have been added in italics as well you could with my export tool you could export this list and then re-import them as italics checks what I'd really like to see, um, as, I've, as I mentioned in a previous video, Perfect it hasn't really involved in terms of the checks that it provides. So maybe in Perfect it 7, we could have a titles of newspapers and magazines checks that checks uh, the use of the, the definite article before it, but also um, also checks the capitalization is the word the capitalized and um, is the is the title of the newspaper or magazine italicized so that's what I'd like to see a single check that checks the italics and checks also the capitalization should the word the be capitalized it should be if it's part of the name it shouldn't be if it's not part of the name all it's doing here is flagging the Albuquerque Journal I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right let's go with the Alaska Star um, I'm gonna pronounce that correctly uh, so the Alaska the Alaska Scar the Alaska Star um, if we said uh, an article appeared in the Alaska Star that's correct so this is being flagged for no reason in that case uh, what we're more interested in here is the capitalization of phrases so yeah I'm not sure I want this as a, I, I'm not sure I would want this as a phrases to avoid consider check I would want it as capitalization of phrases and I would want it as an italics check so maybe we could have titles and newspapers and magazines checking both of these in capitalization of phrases we see these entries for time zones so a.m. central eastern mountain pacific we've got the same later for p.m. Um, this covers the time zones used in the US but even if you're writing American English you might be referring to time zones elsewhere in the world um, so this could be co other time zones could be covered with wildcard checks you might w not want to just flag AM covered by lowercase you'll get false positives but you could look for AM uh, followed by 
the word time appearing maybe with a word in between or maybe with a series of words in between followed by the word time and we could do this with wild cards we could look for am followed by anything before a comma or full stop with the word time there are some interesting entries in capitalization of phrases we see here we've got this list of entries with an followed by a word and this is so that the generic uh, references use lowercase that's the purpose of it so uh, we've got the word ant in here um, let me see whether there's a separate entry for ant okay let's do a whole word find all in current document okay we see great ant as well but um, that's under hyphenation of relationship terms but uh, yeah we see ant okay so if we have an ant and we've capped the word ant it's going to flag it but any other generic references to ant are not going to get flagged for example the ant who lives across the street if we said that it's not going to get flagged uh, similarly if we did this usage where the cap is correct and Vera then uh, it's not going to get flagged if we've not capped it so this is where I would prefer um, well one option is to do a wildcard rule to detect everything another option is to look for the word ant when it's not followed by uh, a word starting with a capital letter and also similarly you could add a rule to detect ant in lowercase followed by a word beginning with a capital letter and this will flag far more entries it does increase the risk of false positives but it will flag more entries using an in this way you can you can actually add two entries so we've not seen that for ant but we have seen it for um which was the entry i checked it was equal rights amendment okay so if i search for that find all in current document we'll see there's an entry for also for capitalization of phrases just for standalone equal rights amendment okay so it means that whenever equal rights amendment doesn't have the word and before it perfected is expect expecting us to write it with initial caps and flagging it if we haven't and if we do have the indefinite article and before it then it's, ex it's expecting it to be lowercase and it's telling us if we've capped it my preferred approach here would just be to put it maybe in phrases to avoid and then it will flag it all the time and then you can check the context each time or if you feel that you're only you know if you feel that normally you're going to write it lowercase but sometimes you need to cap it and you'll forget then you could just add the capitalization of phrases with the caps and you could say if referring to a specific amendment it should be capped so you need to work out which approach is going to work best for you um, let's move on um, here we've got the entries for the Irish counties now these have not actually been changed the only thing that's changed is the, is the comment has been shortened um, the reference to Irish usage has has been removed um, but I, I thought it was interesting to look at these entries because um, here's an example of where using my import tool with list could be useful we've got how many Irish counties there we've got nine Irish counties let's see whether US counties have been included anywhere now normally in the US you put the word county after the name of the county so they'll appear elsewhere so let's do find all in current document okay we see the Orange County register have we got capitalization of phrases entries for no we don't have an entry for example for 
Orange County which we might expect um, I don't know whether it's lowercase in US usage maybe it would be w but whichever way you might want it to be flagged so that when it's written incorrectly it can be corrected now obviously there's a lot of American counties and it's going to take a very long time to introduce them all manually so with my import tool you could get a list of the of um, of the counties in Excel it's then quite easy to append the word county after it or before it whichever you want to do um, and then you can import them uh, you can have a list of I don't know how many US counties there are I'm guessing there's a few hundred um, you can add that to your list and then you can leave it importing it will take about 10 minutes to import you can go make a cup of tea while you do it and and then you have the whole list of American counties and a little bit further down we see another example of something that you could use um, use my import tool for we see here the a reference to a version of the Bible and versions of the Bible are supposed to be capped as is the word version if we decide to include it uh, so we could get a list of Bible names uh, or names of Bible translations we can include uh, English Bible translations we can include translations in other languages and uh, we, we could put this into my import tool and then import them all and then we've got all the um, all the Bible translations in uh, uh, of English Bibles in there in our list I think this is an interesting entry to look at so it's been added face face palm meme and it says titles of memes are usually capitalized now here's where a wildcard rule might be useful um, you could search for a lowercase word followed by the word meme and then say if this is the name of a meme the, the, the name itself should be capitalized then you would probably say except for a meme the meme uh, maybe with a, you could add a rule for the if you're including the plural in the wildcard check you could also exclude those memes some memes um, so you could add some exceptions to prevent false positives but I think I would put up with the false positives here so that this always gets flagged because we've got distracted boyfriend meme I've done a search down here we've got distracted boyfriend meme we've got face palm meme we've got grumpy cat meme but new memes are being invented all the time so I would use a wildcard search yes you're going to get some false positives but at least you're not going to miss the places where uh, where a different meme has been referred to and hasn't been capped similarly this check here um, German Chancellor Merkel we've got okay but she's not the Chancellor anymore how many of the how many others have been included let's see find all we've only got Merkel okay so we've not got the current Chancellor so what you could do here with it with a wildcard check you look for the word German followed by Chancellor in lowercase followed by an uppercase word and then you um, put in the instructions that the word Chancellor should be capped when it appears before a name we're detecting the name by saying a word beginning with uppercase and I don't even think you need the word German here um, presumably it would apply to the I think Austria has a Chancellor the UK has a Chancellor although it's a different type of Chancellor presumably the same rule applies um, so um, yeah a wildcard rule would be more useful here it will then detect previous Chancellors without you having to add them all it will detect future chancellors the names of whom we don't yet know so that would be useful there 
an interesting example here of an entry that's been amended so previously uh, we had gold rush the term gold rush is usually lowercase and now it says unless referring specifically to the California gold rush there's no except for rule here or except after rule they could have added except for California gold rush uh, or except after California but because there's a separate entry for California gold rush in capitalization of phrases that's not needed okay so when you're adding exception rules for capitalization of phrases it may be worth considering just adding a, com a separate rule and then um, and then perfect it will ignore in this case California gold rush if you if you've capped it here we see a simple change that's been made gospel according to John is now capitalized I assume this is a change that's been introduced in the Chicago style guide you've got an option here of adding in fact why have they not added the other entries um, yeah we've got gospel according to John but what about presumably the same rule applies to Matthew Mark and Luke so there should be three more entries there um, you could add it as a, a single entry as wildcard gospel according to and then you have a different name uh, you have um, a word beginning with a cap you can make it look for that but since there's only four entries I would add them in capitalization of phrases so if you work with uh, text referring to the Bible I suggest you add to your list gospel according to Matthew Mark and Luke Halley's Comet has also been updated that's now capitalized we see some new entries down here in the eastern in the northeast in the midwestern in the northern in the northwest these have all been added these have been added as well indigenous people indigenous peoples um, this is the same rule actually that I apply on UN text but um, in my I, I just add it's impossible to predict all the words that are going to come after indigenous when referring to indigenous people so I just add the word indigenous I think I add it as a wild card uh, no I add it as phrases to avoid consider so that I flag the lowercase and the uppercase and then I check it in each instance to see whether it's written correctly we see an, an entry added here for Mac OS to indicate that the first three letters are lowercase the last two letters are uppercase we're seeing some very specific entries that are designed to eliminate false positives so we, there was an earlier entry for lambda indicating that it's lowercase but when we specifically add have Mars polar lander then it's capped so there's a separate entry for that some changes here to uh, Delta and River Valley so Mississippi Delta Mississippi River Valley uh, those words are uh, usually capitalized you wouldn't want to add here you know just the word Delta although it will cover other deltas it would mean that you're getting lots of false positives so it's better to add all the entries that you want to add now if you do text about geography in the United States maybe you want to bring up a list of all the deltas put it in my import tool and then import them all in so that you get them all covered here's another example where I think I would prefer to use phrases to avoid consider we've got on native land on native lands uh, but they're only to be capped if native is being used in the sense of indigenous groups so maybe you just want to add phrases to avoid consider and then you flag all the instances and then you go through and check them uh, one by one another example here where I think wildcards are necessary we've got Pennsylvania and New York avenues the word avenues retains a capital A when it applies to two or more avenues okay but what are the chances of you referring to these specific two avenues in this specific order 
Um, may, maybe, maybe there is a separate entry for New York and Pennsylvania avenues. Let's see. No, there's not. So I think the better solution here would be to look for a word beginning with a cap, followed by and, followed by another word beginning with cap, and then um, followed by avenues with avenue in lowercase and then you you flag that and you say avenue should be in uppercase now in this particular instance we've got two words beginning with a cap there are ways with wildcards we can we can work around this as well we can look for um, after the word and we can look for anything except a comma or full stop or line break before we hit the word avenues and then we can get all manner of um, you know we can even get three word avenue names included then with a single search here we see a list now nothing has changed here um, but we see a list of um, is it all the presidents of the US? How many have we got here? 984 to 024. So we've got 16 plus 24 is 40. Um, so I think that includes all the uh, presidents. Um, especially, yeah, because President Bush only needs to appear once, um, even though there were two Bushes. Um, so this is the kind of thing to keep an eye on and maybe add your own rules had the u.s election gone differently then you would have had to have added uh president harris um so this is a thing to keep an eye on but also a another thing that you can use your lists for so if you're working with a lot of canadian texts for example then um sorry canada doesn't have a president it's a monarchy but if you were referring to a, an, another country that has presidents then you could find the list and you could add all of those presidents to the list i think i think this um i think this one is interesting capitalization of phrases um they've entered it as lowercase which means it's going to flag it when it's uppercase but um i feel that i would want to add it i would want to add the uppercase version okay because i can't think of any instances where if it's not referring to the bible if it's not referring to the bible then you're probably not going to cap it right if if, if you're using it in some other context you're probably not going to cap the s by contrast, if you are referring to the Bible, you might not realize that according to Chicago style, it should be capped. So I think I would add the entry with a cap and then I would say, I, I might add the words check carefully at the beginning and then I would say if referring to the Bible, use an initial cap. Here we've got another list. This time it's senators. Now, obviously, this is not all the senators that the United States has ever had. Um, it's the main ones that are referred to in today's text. So what I would recommend here is actually that you look for, uh, with wildcards, you look for senator with lowercase, followed by a word beginning with a cap, and then you say, if, be if appearing before a name, cap the word senator and then you're not restricted to this small list of senators there are more examples of capitalization of phrases that I could show you but um, they're similar to the examples we've seen already so I've skipped down to settings in settings um, not much has changed really it's mainly just the comments uh, there's an accept rule that has been changed here that's that's been removed um, again the this except before has has been taken out maybe it's no longer necessary maybe this is this except has been hard-coded into it but we do see this m dash with no spaces has been changed to do not test okay so just something to be aware of 
there are no changes at all in the on the prefixes sheet so let's move down to italics here we see um, names of newspapers normally italicized maybe they have s added some of those newspapers then the one I looked for hadn't been added okay Chicago Sun Times Chicago Tribune um, okay they were already in there they've just changed the, the accompanying notes there so these are not additions um, again that's not an addition just to change the note Kaiser has been added that should now be in Roman uh, previously there was no entry for that okay but we're mainly seeing the names of publications okay Pasha was previously not in there it should now be Roman shouldn't be italicized telenovela uh, no italics for that notice singular and plural that's what we need to think about when we're adding our own rules Wall Street Journal okay then we've got sub superscript or subscript no changes in there wild cards they've added a few wild cards not very many okay we do have ones looking for uh, names of time zones uh, uh, to be capitalized and we see uh, Roman numerals before names junior or senior um, basically not to include a comma in those instances we've got all these entries that we had before so these are the only ones that have been had added here in the fine-tuning section we've seen that it will now skip numbers that are followed by IN short for inches um, and it will skip numbers preceded by these words there's around a dozen words that have been added so if we have chap 7 it will uh, not tell you to write out the word 7 the other items in this section it's mainly where the comparison has, has gone a bit wrong I think I my old export tool used to export them in the wrong order so don't pay too much attention to this but um, they do seem to have changed the maximum number of words in a list I think this is for the Oxford comma rule uh, it's changed from three to four and uh, yeah I think some of the other things have have changed slightly because I'm seeing a three and four on this side that's not on the other side um, we see um, no this was just a correction to the export tool so nothing has changed in the sections to skip <laughs> so that's your lot so you'll see there's been quite a lot of changes I've also commented on some other things I've just given you an overview of the updated version and I've also explained how my import and export tools can be useful for adding rules and I've talked a little bit about wildcard rules and I'll talk about all these things in more detail and I will give you the export and import tool in the perfected masterclass so please do sign up check the video description below for the link and spread the word use the hashtags the hashtags are hashtag perfected masterclass and hashtag advanced word for editors uh, editors let me say that again hashtag advanced word for the digit for editors uh, so yeah please spread the word and I hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions please do post them below I will answer them thank you very much